The Dream Team, an incomplete story, written and read by Bettina Levy. It appeared in the middle of the fog. I couldn't be completely sure of what it was. The dim orange light of the street lamp made the atmosphere murky and menacing, and the fog was so thick that the dark figure I saw, or at least I thought I saw, outside my bedroom window could easily have been mistaken for another blurry shadow in the night. But no, I knew it was out there. I wasn't imagining things. I couldn't be. The mysterious, shadowy being creeped ever so slowly down my street, towards my house, towards my window. The figure was too far away to make out its shape properly. In fact, the form of it seemed to change every handful of seconds. I saw the outline of a thin man wearing a heavy trench coat taking long, slow, carefully calculated strides. He seemed to be gripping a long something in his hand. Maybe a baseball bat? Maybe a broken flashlight? Maybe a knife? Next moment, I could have sworn it looked like an army droid right out of Star Wars. One of those clones, complete with armor, mask, and laser gun. I stared silently out the window at the shape-shifting shadow unable to make out any details at all of the ominous thing. It continued its slothful approach, ever closer, ever mysterious. I shivered, feeling an icicle of fear seize my insides. No, I don't have to be afraid, I thought, trying to remain calm. I'm inside. He's outside. As long as I'm here, I'm safe, I reasoned with myself. But then I saw the creature change again. It sprouted several octopus tentacles, making it look like an alien, and grew to an even larger size than the man or droid. It waved its many arms slowly, hauntingly, like they were branches in the wind. At that moment, I had a feeling walls wouldn't stop that thing in the least from coming after me. Why me? What was it looking for? The fog had grown impossibly thicker, so even though I could guess the creepy whatever it was, was several feet away, the true outline and details of the thing were still unclear. Now it seemed like a ragged zombie, not an alien, was lumbering towards my window. Did it want to eat my brain? I had to call for help. I tried to scream. I did, but my voice seemed to die in my throat. I was unable to make a sound. That's when it hit me. I was dreaming. Of course! I should have realized it from the start. I never dream with sound. There were no crickets chirping, no wind whistling, not even any footsteps or other telltale signs of movement from the mysterious monster. I grinned, folding my arms in defiance, no longer afraid. Let the thing come. I didn't care. All I had to do was tell myself to wake up and I'd be out of here, safe and sound in my room. My real room. It's not you they want. I froze. A sound. A whisper. I could hear it, clear as day, as if it had come from right behind me. I'm the one they're searching for. There it was again. I jumped, turning around and whipping my head away from the window and the foggy figure outside and towards the owner of the low, unexpected voice. I was no longer in my room. It seemed, instead, that I was in some kind of dark warehouse. Large boxes and wooden crates randomly stacked in corners tall shelves lined with old dust-covered objects. Yep, I am definitely in dream world right now, I thought. There was no other explanation for me changing location so quickly without any explanation. But the voice, I had actually heard it. What did that mean? Just then, I saw a flash of silver as a dark, but much less menacing figure ducked like a blur behind one of the piles of boxes. Instinctively, I crouched down low and took a fighting stance. I didn't actually know any karate in real life, but hey, this was my dream. I could do anything. If any ninjas started flying at me, I was ready for them. Show yourself, I dared the hiding shadow. Slowly, tentatively, as if in response, I saw the form peek out from his hiding place. I relaxed my arms. It was a boy, perhaps the same age as me. All I could see of him was a hand, one sky-blue eye, and messy hair the color of moonshine glimmering in the darkness. The rest of him was obscured by the boxes. We looked at each other silently for a moment. 
Then I saw the boy's eye focus on something else, something over my shoulder. Clearly terrified, he ducked his head back into hiding. Don't let them get me, please. That voice again, it was his. What was the boy talking about? Who was them? Unless... Feeling a new type of horror, I turned back to face my bedroom window again. Strange that it was still there, but somehow I'd known it would be. Dream logic could be a bit strange sometimes, but I consider myself something of an expert with all the dreams I've had. And I looked outside to see... Nothing. The street was empty, devoid of any creeper or monster. All the fog had cleared away, and the street lamp shone bright yellow. Nothing was coming towards my house anymore. For one shining second, I thought I was safe. No, we were safe. Me and the boy, hiding behind the crates. We were... No! The next terrible second, a second that would become branded in my mind, a giant, monstrous face took over my window. It had burning yellow demon eyes, and a mouth full of rows upon rows of long, dagger-like teeth, like a shark, ready to swallow me whole. This time, when I opened my mouth to scream, I did. I belted it out at the top of my lungs. I screamed so loud, in fact, that the next thing I knew, the very next moment after seeing that horrifying image, I was awake. For about a minute, I just sat up in bed, bolt upright, eyes wide, my whole body tense, rigid, and pumping with adrenaline left over from my nightmare. I took huge gulping breaths, as if I'd just finished running a marathon. Eventually, though, I was able to slow my breathing down to calm, purposeful inhales, and my heart rate returned to normal. All of a sudden, I felt much more tired than when I'd originally gone to sleep. My head felt so heavy. I rubbed my eyes, regretting taking in that late movie with my friend Penelope the previous night. It had been an interesting flick, no doubt about that. It was about dreams within other dreams. But I didn't end up getting home until well past midnight. I couldn't have been asleep for more than a few hours. I lolled my head wearily in the direction of my digital alarm clock. 6 a.m. Just like that, I forgot all about my exhaustion and rolled out of bed. By the dim, pre-dawn light of the room, I began to hunt through my nightstand drawer for my top-secret sketchbook that contained all of my most special and important dreams. I don't consider myself a very superstitious person. I don't buy any of that stuff about black cats or four-leaf clovers or Friday the 13th. However, I am a strong believer in the power of dreams, and I believed that the hour just before sunrise was the time I have my most potent and meaningful dreams. Call me crazy if you want to, but I knew that if I didn't record my nightmare, like, right now, yes, even as horrible and frightening as it was, I'd forget everything and the dream's message would likely be lost to me forever. Something inside me said this was not an option. At last, I located my dream journal, a thick, leather-bound tome with a cover as black as night. I took it out of the drawer, grabbed a pencil, and flicked on my tiny reading light. Immediately, I started making quick, broad strokes with the pencil, sketching that which I remembered the most from my dream. I went after the monster, that mysterious shadow demon, first, expelling it from the dangerous confines of my mind and capturing it, transferring it to the more secure prison of lined paper. I only made a general shape of the thing. I didn't want to spend too much time getting all the details of the monster just right. I'd get back to it later. Much later. For now, I had to move fast. My next drawing was of the mysterious, dusty warehouse and the frightened boy behind the boxes. For some reason, I decided to draw another picture of the starry-eyed, silver-haired boy by himself. I didn't draw him cowering and frightened, like he'd been in my dreams, but standing tall and defiant, a determined look on his face. How had I heard him talking to me? I've never dreamt with sound before. That must sound pretty strange to you but it's true. It took me a long time to realize it, but I've concluded that when I dream, it's as if I'm deaf. My dreams are really like silent movies. Done with my sketches, I proceeded to write a full account of my nightmare on the next page, describing everything that had gone down in the greatest detail I could possibly manage. I even made a quick list of all the forms I could remember the shadow demon taking as it approached me in the fog. I must have mentioned about a dozen, although I'm sure I might have forgotten one or two. 
My hand literally seemed to fly across the pages. Sometimes I had to stop writing and pause for a moment, either to give my wrist a rest or so I could close my eyes for a few seconds. I was better able to bring up the memories of my dreams that way. It took me the better part of an hour to finally reach the end of my nightmare, the light in my room growing steadily brighter as the morning progressed. Finally, when I could see the sun shining straight through my window, my wrist slightly achy and cramping, I closed my sketchbook, slipped it back into its drawer, and flopped back down on my bed, tired once more. I shut my eyes, hoping to get away with a few more winks before I officially started my day. Alas, it seemed mere minutes had passed before my alarm started blaring. Lazily, I felt around for the off button and sat up in bed for the second time that morning. Morning. Time for me to leave Dream World behind. Time for me to wake up. Hey everyone, my name is Bettina, and that was The Dream Team. I wanted to find another somewhat scary story for you guys, seeing as that's October, and I'm really proud of how this story holds up after so much time. I wrote this about four years ago, and it was inspired by a friend of mine who used to remember his dreams in great detail, and he told me about them, and he he was a writer too, and he would write great stories based on them. So I really like that. I'm jealous of his ability to remember his dreams so well. And once or twice we popped up in each other's dreams, so it was like we were the dream team. Um, so yeah, I had this scene in my head of a nightmare with a shadow demon, and these two characters uh, meet in the dream, and then one of the characters write about it, but I never really knew what was supposed to happen next. I wanted more to happen. I mean, it's a good ending, I think. He wakes up, he writes about it, goes on with his day. But if you guys have any suggestions on what should happen next, like if the characters meet in real life, if they really have to battle these shadow demons and save the world, or if my character is a boy or a girl. Like, I didn't even decide that. So, leave your suggestions in the comments, and who knows? Maybe I'll make a part two of this story and include your idea. Um, I'll, I'll credit you, don't worry. I'll, I won't take any credit for it. Um, oh, today is the Back to the Future Day. Great Scott. Oh, this is heavy. Um, my sister made a My Little Pony parody of Back to the Future, all three s movies, so I'll leave a link in the description so that you guys can see it, and I will see you in next week's reading video. Take care, guys. Bettina out. <laughs>